I just want to talk a little bit about CNC work. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to this kind of thing that I'm doing here. Um, what I'm not, I'm not doing production style CNC work. I'm not trying to develop code so I can make a thousand violins. I want to make one violin and I want to make that one violin incredibly accurately <laughs> and incredibly precisely. So um, if you look at the margin of error when you're cutting something by hand, you're looking at 20, 30 thousandths of an inch of margin of error. I'm trying to get that margin of error down to 10 thousandths, um, which is, I think, is about uh, as good as you can do working with wood. Um, certainly, if you're working in aluminum or a, a more dense material, the harder the wood is, the more accurate you can be with. But since we're working with spruce here, <laughs> and that is our difficulty of the day, the spruce is incredibly difficult to work with in some aspects. It's very easy to cut, it's very smooth to cut, but um, it, it's tricky to get precise on such a soft wood. So I've been doing test cuts all week, um, uncovering a, a few errors and problems that I have in my machine. So my machine is doing uh, this thing where it shuts down when there's too much static electricity from the dust collection. Um, cutting the spruce top, it's such a small part, um, I don't really need to run the dust collection. Uh, I would like to, <laughs> but I don't, uh, but I don't need to. So um, I've been working to try to solve that. Um, I've been doing lots of test pieces, I'll show you my test pieces. Um, I'm working on the fifth test cut tonight, so I, I get a few comments that, you know, the CNC work I'm doing is cheating or are um, not the same. Um, it just happens to be uh, very natural to me. I have a background in CAD, and so using the computer to design parts was very natural to me. And when I discovered CNCs, uh, it was just it was just the natural way that I came to make these kinds of parts. I'm not saying that it's right for everyone. It certainly isn't. This is just the way I like to do it. And I'm only doing this for my own enjoyment. So. Um, so here we go, we're gonna start trying to make this top. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about this process that I'm using to, to develop the tool paths for, uh, for cutting out this um, violin top. So if I was cutting this part by hand, I would have been done days ago. Um, this is just kind of a, a practice that I like to, to work on to try to get the nicest, most accurate cut that I can possibly do, and it's a trial and error process. So I began making test pieces. Um, my first test piece is here, and uh, it wasn't, I wasn't, I had to adjust my tooling because I couldn't really see this in the simulation, but I'm not removing enough material here. I had this big thick chunk of material right here. So I corrected that um, in this one, and I, I took out the material the way I liked it, but the dust collector running with this MDF created too much static electricity, and that shut down the machine a couple of times. Um, so then I spent some time troubleshooting that. Then on my third test piece, I was able to successfully finish a cut and I was really happy with the way that one looked. Um, then it was time to do the outside contour. So I did the inside contour the way I had in this one and then the outside contour and uh, I had a little bit of alignment issues, took notes, this whole process I'm taking notes going in and adjusting my code based on those notes. Um, so this one, I decided that I was gonna try to run this inlay channel here and see if I could do that on the machine and it actually worked out really well. So then finally in the fifth test piece, um, I actually did some inlay work there and uh, everything worked out really nice and I was really happy and so then it was finally time to cut the part. So. Is this a fast process? No. Is it a process that you can just throw some lumber in the machine and it, you know, come back when it's all cut out perfectly? Uh, no, not, not at all. Not the way I'm doing it. Not to make one part perfectly. So um, that's just where I'm at. And now that we have all of our code worked out, let's start cutting this top out for real.
Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for this uh, part. And uh, we got the top and back all cut out. And I got this inlay channel routed. Um, originally I was gonna do this by hand, but uh, the, the sides came out more precise than I expected and the top came out more precise than I expected. So um, I figured might, might as well go for it. So um, next time we're gonna finish this inlay work and then we're gonna do finishing passes to cut everything down and get that recurve in there. And uh, we will be set for finishing this thing up and uh, gluing it on to the ribs. Um, looking pretty nice so uh, um, a few things yeah we got a integrated base bar in here that's not traditional but uh, I wanted to try something uh, different and uh, I've, I've made a couple of mandolins this way and I really like the way they sound so I figured I'd try it on this one and see what happens um, if I don't like it I can always make a new top <laughs> so this is looking pretty good. Uh, thanks for your watching. Thanks for your likes. Thanks for subscribing. Please share. We'd love to hear your comments down in the comment section. Um, ideas for any other instruments you might want to see me build. I'm thinking there's a lot of folks that want to see me build another nickel harpa. Um, I am in the process of designing one for the folks that are looking for plans. Um, I will have a full set of nickel harpa plans um, at some point in the future, but thinking the next instrument might be a banjo. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. So, see you next time.